This is Dolmany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, good evening, actually. It's 624 local time here in Alberta. And, uh, well, normally we don't get to a game preview this late in the evening, but you know what? It's an 8.30 start here for game number three against the Chicago Blackhawks, the best of five play-in series to advance to round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And our Edmonton Oilers sitting here tied 1-1 one, one with the Blackhawks after Game 1's disaster, Game 2's brilliance, and now we await what we will see in Game number 3. One thing we know for sure we'll see in Game number 3 is Miko Koskinen starting a second straight hockey game. A solid performance right at 3 goals against, but guys, Miko Koskinen 3 goals against in that game... More than enough to get the job done. Steady Eddie the rest of the night, right? And realistically, you know what, Mikko Koskinen? Good effort, good effort. So, let's get to it. You know what, first things first, get you those lineups. They haven't changed from Game 2, but for those of you tuning into Game 3 for the first time this series, maybe you might want those lineups, so let me see if I can get them in here for you. And uh, let's talk about those. Really, like I said, there's absolutely no changes to the lineup after the lineup changed on the day of Game 2 as the Oilers' Game 3 lineup still features Zach Kazian on the third line with Athanasiu and Sheehan and Josh Archibald remains up top with Connor McDavid and Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Yes, sir, he does. So if I can find it here in my notes somewhere, Oilers Game 3, uh, where would it be, where would it be, Game 3, there we go. Alright, let's go get this done, there it is, and bingo, you'd think I'd be well put together, I don't know what that was, let's get to this, right here it is. Nugent Hopkins, McDavid, Archibald, Ennis, Dreisaitl, Yamamoto, Athanasiu, Sheehan, Kazi, and Neil Karachies on the best Fourth line in the Stanley Cup playoffs this year, scoring two goals in game number two and having an important impact on the game all the way around. Now, Cloughbaum, Larson, Nurse, Bear, Chris Russell, Matt Benning, Bob Stoffer today crediting Chris Russell as being a big part of that Oilers PK that really got the job done in game two, a four for four performance. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, that is where our only Real key to the game is tonight is simply for the Edmonton Oilers stay out of the penalty box. We've cleaned up av absolutely almost everything else from the games prior to game two, right? Game one. Game one, lack of compete, lack of hustle, lack of heart, lack of physicality, lack of physical engagement, lack of pretty much anything you want to name the Oilers. They did lack it in game one. Now game two, man, they came to battle, they came to play, they came hard, they came fast, they scored goals, they lit the Hawks up in every department of the game pretty much. Yes, they allowed three goals, but guys, we're not talking the Oilers as the top defensive unit in the NHL, so three goals, if we're winning 4-3 three out of three out of four times, we'll take it, right? That's the thing. So honestly, you know what? tonight just keep tightening up the screws right we had a good performance we took it down from six to three so if we can take it down from three to two or one tonight in terms of the goals against that would be stellar and the reason I think that's a possibility for this Oilers team is you've seen Patrick Kane you've seen Jonathan Taves you've seen Kubalik you've seen Saad you've seen everybody that's really going to hurt you score a goal against you in this series right and you've figured out Crawford honestly Ask yourself, who's had the worst series so far, Mike Smith or Corey Crawford? The answer, pretty glaringly obvious, it's Corey Crawford at this point. Yeah, you know what, Mike Smith had a terrible game one, but Corey Crawford has now given up 10 goals in this series and been in net for every single Oilers goal scored against him. So, right, at some point you got to look at where this goaltending matchup's going, and it's going to a disadvantage for the Hawks, especially since if you... Uh, follow what everybody's been saying online Connor McDavid now has figured Corey Crawford out and it might just be game over for the Hawks if that continues tonight and into Friday afternoon at 445 so that's the key right I think you know what another big performance out of the captain but that's what we expect so the next guy it falls down to is Leon Dreisaitl 
And Leon Draisaitl, you got to kind of look at what he's done this year. He's not a whole bunch of a lot in terms of flashing or absolutely lighting it up out there. So, you know what? Everybody's starting to think Draisaitl Yamamoto due to break out in this game. Well, my friends, that would be very welcome. You think if you've got Connor McDavid, for lack of a better term, pissed off, and you've got Leon Draisaitl scoring at will, and you've got two lines rolling, and then you've got a third line in Athanasiu, Sheehan, and Kazian who are rolling. Then you've got a fourth line scoring two goals. Guys, I know you're not going to score nine goals a night in the playoffs, but what else does that sound like? This Oilers offense is historically capable of producing crooked numbers based on, obviously, the night before and what we've seen at times this year. So it would be very nice to see the Oilers follow up a game two effort in which they had good good everything. Actually, the power play was probably the worst part of the team game on game two. Great even strength play. Guys scoring goals, right? Think Ennis, Chieson, and Neil. Guys that we're not counting on big, big time like McDavid, Drysdale, Nugent Hopkins, and Yamamoto to score big goals for us. Scoring big goals, right? That Ennis one got it 3-3. Three, three, 3-2 so they could tie it 3-3 and then Chase on a Neil put it be, put it to bed. Straight up. Connor McDavid ended the game. Chase on a Neil put it to bed. So that was that was stellar to get that out of your fourth line. So again, tonight it's just about tightening those screws and getting the job done defensively because the offense, if we've figured out Corey Crawford, which is six goal night and a four goal night back to back games against the same goaltender. I think we've figured out Corey Crawford, and I doubt they're going to start Malcolm Subban, so we should have a chance here to do some real crooked damage. Well, that bodes well as long as we stay out of the box and tighten the defensive screws. And seriously, we looked pretty capable of it in Game 2, late in Game 1. So now all it comes down to is just continuing that and taking it from here to here to here to here to here to here and getting the job done that way. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Oilers feature here in Game 3. I think the big question for me is, if McDavid comes out of the gate hot, does everybody else do exactly what they did in Game 2? And I think straight up the answer, the common sense answer, would be yes. Now, the problem is, if McDavid comes out hot and everybody else comes out flat, we might be in a little bit of danger. And yes, the Hawks... What we haven't talked about is a Hawk rebound from that game in Game 2. Obviously, the Hawks still not the most stellar, right? You think about that, uh, was it the James Neal? No, it was the Alex Chase on goal where they have a forward standing in their own crease. You think about that, that's any way you want to cut it. That's not good hockey, especially given you've got a fourth line face and you've, you've got a forward in your net, so... I imagine the Hawks will try and rebound a little bit here in Game 3, but end of the day, do what you can control. Keep it 60 minutes at a time. Go out and win tonight, and then we can be talking. I don't want to say it. Uh, you know what? Straight up, I'm not going to say it. But we'll be talking some important words Friday afternoon here on Dolany TV whenever I get off work, because that's the key. You know, vehicle's broken down, and the game's at 4.45, and I get off work at 4.30, and straight up as it's looking, work is more important on Friday. <laughs> because I'll tell you one thing about uh, sheet metal in the summer. You make hay when the sun shines. And in sheet metal in the summer, that means you're pounding a lot of houses in on the weekend, which means the material needs to be there on Friday before the warehouse is closed. Which means me, being at the warehouse, got to get it there on Friday. And that's one, two, three, four. How many ever deliveries get added tomorrow? And suddenly we got a busy day. So, Friday's going to be a crazy day. But you know what? Like I said, take it 60 minutes of time. Control what we can control tonight. And get that 2-1 series lead. And then we'll figure out how important or unimportant game number four is against the Hawks at 4.45 on Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you at 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time tonight in the live stream for game three. I will still be wearing this hot plaid shirt. Bad mistake on my end, but we'll make do where we can and uh, get lots of water in me here soon. Guys, I'm Tyson. This is Dolan ATV. Of course, 
Get your score predictions in the comments section down below. I always forget about that. I always seem to forget about the score predictions. We did that so readily during the regular season. But I mean, and this only game, what, four back since March? Time, it passes fast. Ladies and gentlemen, get your meals in you. Get your, hey, actually, you know what? Get your pregame spaghetti in you. That would be a good call. I'm Tyson Dolany TV up on over here.